Welcome to Gray Overload. I'm Anthony. Intel announces the 8th gen core architecture of Coffee Lake. Let's dive in. With this uh, announcement here of the 8th generation for the desktop family, Intel now is going and taking a swing right back in AMD with their next generation here. And it's got a, it's pretty interesting stuff how it's coming out. And I like this competition. It's really helping out the consumer get the best performance, I think. And we'll see what the performance is here very soon. But on October 5th is going to be the release of them of this year here. And with that is going to come with a new chipset series, which is going to be the 300 series. And the Intel Z370 chipset uh, will work best with all the unlocked K processors as well especially for contact creators, gamers, and overclockers as well. But it's kind of funny here that AMD went through and named their chipsets in the 3 Series, and now we have Intel, you know, continuing on. I mean, no fault of Intel, right? It was just in their series going up and up and up. So it might be a little bit confusing for some, and I'm hoping that maybe there might be some education needed that Newegg can then basically say, hey, is this really what you wanted to buy? If that happens to be, I think most people are going to be understanding this from day one. But it's just funny, you know. We got 370s now on both sides for the chipset. So pretty interesting there. But the big news for me is that Intel i7s are going to 6 th uh, cores, 12 threads. And they're saying that this is going to be the best gaming processor. Um, I don't know what resolution they're testing at, but Intel already had a great gaming processor, the best for frame rates in that 1080p as well uh, in their last generation so this 8th gen is going to keep up with that i5 is going to be 6 core 6 threads it's going to be the first ever in that mid range is what they're saying in their i in their core series and then the i3 is going to be 4 cores 4 threads so they're getting rid of all the 2 core stuff as well and i think that's kind of a response to amd going not having any 2 cores there so kudos to amd to put that forward and kudos then to intel to then respond and give us more value, so I, I'm liking it. I'm enjoying this every. Very, I'm enjoying this very, very much. Uh, but Intel says that this is also going to be a refined 14 nanometer process of these processors. So we're still in that 14 nanometer. We haven't gone to 10 or anything else yet. We're still waiting on that, and hopefully I get that someday. That's what I'm waiting for. But we'll see. And then a little, few little bit more uh, specs of what they're claiming that this processor can do is. Uh, frame rate is performance of the frame rate on games is up to 25% compared with 7th generation. So this is just generation to generation, which is quite an uh, impressive number to go to say. You get the, you know, the more cores, which might help you, but I'll slow those the single threading games. I think that the, you know, like clock speed will also help you there too with their boost, that tur turbo boost 2.0, up to, I believe, a quick 4.7 on their i7. So and then they also said that it's going to be 65% faster editing over a three-year-old machine. So that's time to get rid of the old machines, time to upgrade. Intel has done that a lot with their last gener couple of generations of announcing processors. They compare it to three- or five-year-old machines, and they just want you to upgrade. You know, it's logical for them to do that as well. But, you know, a lot of machines, if you are able to spend that extra money or are looking for a new machine, it's, you know, they're trying to get you in that upgrade cycle as well. And they say it's 32% faster at 4K uh, 360 degree video rendering and 65% faster than a three-year-old machine. They're saying that you're going to have an incredible VR, uh, great gaming, high ultra-high depth entertainment. And, you know, one really cool feature is that Intel Quick Sync video technology and how that works. We'll see what AMD does with uh, competing in that realm as well with some of their APUs that come out here very soon as well as graphics cards. But they, you know, they have something comparable, but the Intel QuickSync, it works very well from what I've tested it with. Very, been very, very impressed. And of course, that these processors are all two memory channel as well. But to get into the specs of these, you got the i7-8700K at 3.7 gigahertz uh, base clock, 4.7 uh, turbo, you have 6 uh, cores, 12 threads, 95 watt TDP, and the GPUs are all 630s across this whole line, and they have different uh, megahertz specs, you know, 12 up to 1200 megahertz 
or up to 1150 megahertz for the lower end i5 and i3 and this intel smart cache and for the i7s you're going to have 12 uh, megs of cache which is quite kind of interesting it auto adjusts depending upon what how much is needed by each core which is a you know another improvement for intel and i you know it i wish intel was throwing these improvements out you know in the last couple of years but with competition they seem to be pushing this forward a little bit uh, for, further but this ice this, that 8700k that's their top of the line dog that they have here followed by the 80 the i7 8700 which is 3.2 gigahertz base 4.6 uh, gigahertz turbo again it's six cores 12 threads and a 65 watt tdp so that's you're uh, slicing off 35 watts so that leaves you that's quite impressive to get it down that low i'm very interested to see if you run up against that tdp maybe for some long operations you know if i i might be able to get one of these we'll see for testing going forward i hope i do kind of interesting but again it also has 12 megs of cash then rolling into i5s i depending upon how this works out this might be a great value here so you got the 86 i5 8600k 3.6 gigahertz base 4.3 turbo six cores six threads at a 95 watt tdp with nine megs of cash well i, I want to know what the price per performance is here as well that's that seems like it might be a nice little sweet spot as long as with the i5 8400 and that's 2.8 uh, gigahertz base, 4 gigahertz turbo, 6 cores, 6 threads again, and it says 65 watt TDP. These are getting into some, you know, these 65 watt TDP, some great, you know, media center, you know, throw it in the corner of the room, you know, low power systems. Not super low power, right? But some systems where it's just like, hey, I might want to do some light gaming, want, you know, stuff like that, which, you know, might work well with, especially if the price is right. Um, then you have the i3 8300 or 8350k, which is uh, four gigahertz base clock, no turbo, four cores, four threads, and uh, 91 watt TDP, and then also eight megs of cache. Th this is another one. These these six cores and four threads, i5s and i3s. I'm very interested in to see where the value is and what they can be basically used for. It's very exciting here now in the CPU market now that we finally got competition. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. But then you find out, to round this out, you have the 80, uh, i3-8100, uh, which is 3.6 gigahertz, four cores, four threads, 65 watt TDP, and it's got eight megs of cache as well. And that's your full lineup, as you can see here. I'm very interested to see how these perform. I'm hoping I can get at least one of these in my hands to test it out, just to see how well it works and to see you know what use cases it will do well in you know especially for some gaming boxes that need to fit into these i think it's going to be great especially you know if you want you know, maybe a side box for you know maybe simple you know desktop you know gaming or whatever else these can be a great you know mini itx and everything like that especially with the power uh, limits of 65 watts so I'm, I'm really excited about these and I can't wait for the next thing that AMD has, especially in the desktop realm, and for these to go back and forth because I think right now consumers have to be really, really enjoying this, that they are starting to get the best of both AMD and Intel and they are reaping the benefits of lower prices over t you know, as they, over time it seems like prices are dropping and they're getting performance that they deserve consumers deserve greater performance so with that i really want to thank you for uh stopping by and watching gray overload here and watching the video and make sure you leave a comment below make sure you take a time to leave that i love reading them they're always interesting to me and until next time thank you for watching thanks for watching gray overload if you like this content be sure to subscribe